What's going on guys, Josh Pocock here. Now, just over a month ago on this channel, we covered Quen 2.5, the quote unquote, best open source LLM. So we tested it before with the 1.5B and 7B sizes, but now there's the 0.5B, the 3B, the 14B, and the 32B coder model. And just judging off these benchmarks, this model looks insane. Comparative to models like GPT-40 or Claude 3.5 Sonnet, they claim that it rivals GPT-40. We're gonna run some tests and see what this model's made of and see if their claims and these benchmarks are actually what they say they are. Let's dive right into it. All right, guys, so all links covered in this video will be linked down below. The link to Quen's tweet right here announcing that they have their Quen 2.5 Coder 32B Instruct model. And here they claim that this model reaches top tier performance, highly competitive, or even surpassing proprietary models like GPT-40 in a series benchmark valuation, including human eval, MBPP, live code bench, big code bench, Mick Eval, Ader, etc. As well as a link to their in-depth blog post going over these benchmarks that I would definitely recommend checking out if you want to deeper dive into this. Just to quickly go over some of this, they say Quen 2.5 Coder 32B Instruct has become the current SOTA open source model, matching the coding capabilities of GPT-40 while demonstrating strong and comprehensive coding capabilities. It also possesses good general and mathematical skills. They tested it in many different areas, such as code generation, code repair, code reasoning. So it supports multiple programming languages, over 40 different languages, scoring 65.9 on MickEval. All right, it has a 128K token context window length. Uh, under the Apache 2.0 license, you can see all the different specs right here. All right, they tested it in different scenarios, including cursor and artifacts, and we'll showcase some of those in just a second. There's also a video right here that I would encourage you to watch and check out as well. Like I said, this blog post will be down below so you can check it out more in depth. Now there's two main ways we can actually use this model. One is the hugging face uh, chat right here, which I'll leave linked down below. The other is the hugging face artifact, which I'll leave linked down below. Now, if you have the right hardware specs, you could also run this on uh, locally using Olama or LLM Studio. All right, so I'll leave this link down below as well. You would simply just copy this command, Olama run Quen 2.5 coder 32B and you would just run that. Now you can also use this in something like cursor too. So now to do that, you would go to openrouter.ai right here. I'll leave a link down below and you can actually set this up within cursor. Now you'll see that there also are some other Quen 2.5 coder 32B instruct providers. So we have deep infra, we have hyperbolic and fireworks. So you could also use some of these other providers as well. I will leave them linked down below as well. So hyperbolic here, deep infra and fireworks. But I'm gonna be using open router just for simplicity here. So all you would simply do is just go into your cursor. You could also do this pretty much anywhere where there is an open AI um, base URL that you can change. And you would simply just go to your settings and cursor. You would go under open AI API key. You would want to override the OpenAI base URL and you would paste this right here, the openrouter.ai forward slash API forward slash V1. You would save that and then simply just paste in your open router API key. And then over here, you would just actually go up here actually to the add model and you would just simply copy the model name right here under with open router and paste that over into cursor like so. As you can see, I went down here and selected Quen 2.5 coder and asked it if it is Quen 2.5 coder and it said, yes, it is. All right, so we'll do some tests in cursor in just a second here. Now, before I do those, we're just gonna go through some of these quick tests right here. These are some tests that we've run on a number of different models on this channel. So we'll run through some of these basic ones. Some of them are a little bit more challenging than others. And then we'll try some more advanced ones and try some in cursor as well, just to see the full scope of what this model is made of. Okay, so I can say write a Python function to generate the Fibonacci sequence to the 10th number. Okay, so I'm going to run Python fib.py right here. And boom, we got the correct answer. So that is a pass. All right, next we're going to say generate a bash script to create 10 files named a1.txt through a10.txt. 
All right, we created the file that it generated. Now I'm going to run it and boom, it created all the 10 files right here. So that's a pass. Next is generate a SVG of a tree. Okay, and it passed. All right, next I'm going to say generate me the Pong game using Python. All right, so it's telling us to pip install Pygame right here. I'm going to run that. And while that's installing, I'm going to apply this Pong game right here into our file and save. All right, now I'm going to run Python Pong.py. Okay, and we got a Pong game right here. Not the best, not the worst, but it is a pass. All right, for this one, we'll use the artifact on Hugging Face. So create a landing page using CSS, JS, and HTML. It should be a website of a beauty store that has a header, banner, features, and testimonials. And checkout section, make it look professional and very modern. Okay, so we can see the artifact generating code right here. We got our HTML and our CSS right here. Okay, so we got our beauty store right now. We can see features, testimonials, checkout. So we got testimonials right here, checkout page, um, features page. So definitely not the most visually appealing, but it is a pass. Next, we'll say create a responsive grid layout with HTML and CSS that displays four items per row on a large screen, two per row on a medium screen, and one per row on a small screen. All right, so we have four items here. If we make it smaller, there's two. And then if we make it smaller, there's one. So that's a pass. All right, so it passed those basic tests with flying colors. Let's go ahead and try some more challenging tests right here. All right, so we'll try out this medium difficulty one right here on leak code. All right, so we'll copy this right here and paste it right over here. Okay, so it generated our code right here. I'm going to go ahead and copy this. And let's go ahead and paste it over here and we can run it. Okay, it was accepted. Let's go ahead and submit this. Okay, and it passed. All right, let's go ahead and try a difficulty level hard right here with a 49% acceptance rate, design cancelable function. Okay, so I'm going to copy this right here. I'm going to paste this right here and click send. Okay, so I'm going to copy the output right here and paste it right here. Let's go ahead and run it. Okay, it accepted. Let's submit it. Oh, okay, so wrong answer. Okay, I'll try one more time. I'm going to copy this. Paste it back into here saying wrong answer. All right, so it did give us a revised implementation. Let's go ahead and try this one more time. Okay, we're submitting it one more time here. And it got the answer wrong again. All right, so next I'm going to say I want to create a very modern task manager app using ShadCN UI, Next.js 15 app router using cursor. Okay, so I'm going to run this command right here to create the Next.js app. Okay, so our next app is installed here. Let's go ahead and run this. Okay, now I'm actually going to ask it to create this app using the composer right here. And let's go ahead and click on submit. Okay, so we got it set up. It's not the definitely not the most efficient way if I was to actually set up an app um, in terms of like the way I'm setting up this Next.js app. But, you know, surprisingly, it actually, I mean, it, not really surprisingly, it did a pretty good job, um, to be honest. I'll show you what it looks like. And this is very, very basic here, as we can see, but it is using ShadCM. We got a simple task manager app. We can go test right here, add some tasks like so. We can see learn examples. Okay, so I guess this is from the original Next.js app. It didn't remove that. All right, so I'm going to say add light mode or dark mode uh, toggle to my ShadCN app and make it way better with more features. Okay, so it added this thing that shows how many tasks there are. So if I add a third task, it will go to three tasks and I can clear all tasks. And it did add a button up here, but the dark mode isn't working. All right, guys, I think you get the point here. All in all, this model is pretty impressive in terms of open source models. It aced some of those basic tests we did at the start, and then it even did pretty good on those leak code tests. You know, it was struggling on some of the harder ones, but it was good at the medium ones. And in terms of using it in cursor with something like Open Router or one of the other um, providers that I showed you, it does pretty well in terms of generating code, multi-file editing, etc. So all in all, I would definitely say it isn't Claude Sonnet 3.5 level or even GPT 4.0 level by any means. You know, it is maybe getting closer in terms of open source models. But, you know, like I said, for open source models, it is definitely pretty impressive. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below, guys. You know, it does have some really, really impressive benchmarks. But after all, we can't always just go off of benchmarks because so many models can just say they have the best benchmarks in the world and the best models but when you actually implement them and test them and use them it may not actually back up those you know results so let me know what your thoughts are down below guys other than that if you're new to the channel we upload videos about ai marketing sales business growth so if you like that type of content you got some value here like the video comment down below and subscribe to stay up to date with the uploads 
Also, too, guys, if you haven't already joined our free community, stridecommunity.com, I'll leave a link down below to our free Facebook group and Discord channel. And then also, too, guys, if you run a business and you need help with systems, marketing, sales, operations, or implementing AI agents into your business, like AI appointment centers, AI call centers, whatever the case may be, book a call down below at executivestride.com forward slash apply. Other than that, guys, I will see you in the next video. Keep hustling, keep grinding, and of course, guys, accelerate your stride. Take care. Are you tired of pouring thousands of dollars into appointment setters only to watch leads slip away? Imagine having a team of elite sales agents booking qualified appointments for you around the clock. No more wasted time on training, no more frustration with performance, and no more draining your budget on inconsistent and expensive call centers. Introducing Stride Agents, AI-powered appointment setters that work 24 seven, never get tired, and book appointments while you sleep. Trained on thousands of successful conversations, our AI agents outperform human teams at just one-tenth of the cost. Join the ranks of businesses that doubled their appointments and booking rates in just a matter of weeks. Don't get left behind in the AI revolution. Visit strideagents.com now and transform your entire sales process with cutting-edge AI technology. It's time to accelerate your stride with AI agents.